Hello there and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 622 of the Agostino Zynga show. This is your host Agostino Zynga. I hope you are doing well wherever this pod may find you. I hope you are doing well. How am I? You know what the deal is. Alive and kicking, doing the damn thing, trying to put one foot in front of the other and keep myself stable. Hopefully you guys are well wherever you are. We're going to go right into the show because I've got many, many things to talk about. I don't want to waste any more of your time. So I was sitting here randomly just perusing on social media, doing my thing as I usually do, wasting time, you know, letting the flipping minutes and hours kind of pass me by while I'm not doing the things that I probably should be doing to advance my life and my career. And I happened to stumble upon this picture that was shared on social media of the one and only Kanye West. And it says as following. Kanye in Beverly Hills last night and you could see him wearing an entire Adidas and Balenciaga um, you know garb sipping some sort of champagne or a wine whatever it may be outside of some restaurants I looked at it, I was thinking that's an interesting picture based on the brands alone that this man is wearing and the reason why it made me think it's interesting because you all know what's been happening with Ye right you know what's been happening with Kanye you know what the deal is with all this Jewish comments he's been making and people labeling him an anti-semite which he might be who knows but he's been in a bit of you know a bit of trouble over the last few months it feels like he just keeps ratcheting it up all the time never apologizing doubling down tripling down quadrupling down to the point where he lost a lot of money because Adidas ditched him Balenciaga ditched him he couldn't do concerts in places and I'm pretty much sure and I'm pretty sure if Kyrie Irving had to make that hostage type video to have the ability to go back and play basketball again, I'm pretty sure Kanye is probably still feeling the after effects of all the comments that he's made. So life probably isn't the smoothest it's been for him when it comes to moving around and doing the things that he wants to do in terms of business because everybody's been scared off of him because of those comments. But for me, the thing that was really interesting about seeing this picture are the brands because you feel like Kanye, like much like myself, is somebody that is quite materialistic. It is somebody that puts a lot of value in brands. It is somebody that pro probably attached a lot of their own personal value on the brands themselves. And for him to be such an ardent Demna fan like myself, for him to be such a big fanatic of Balenciaga like myself and Vetemar to a certain extent like myself, to then publicly get essentially dismissed or for have to have Ben Sjoga publicly dis, um, distance himself from him to the point where they removed all his selects from their website, added us to basically cancel his contract and not pay him any royalties. I, I'm assuming it's probably going to go to court and essentially say, hey, we're going to still release your shoes under our own banner, but you're not going to get anything from this. And for him to step out in that same garb says a lot about the guy. Either he's trolling or he generally doesn't care. Like the product always comes first and he's able to separate the person who makes it or the business around it and the relationships around it and just wear it for what it is. And I wish, talking about myself, I wish I could be that person. I wish I could separate the person who makes a particular item and the item that they actually make because essentially a product is an inanimate object i shouldn't really associate any or link any kind of personality any wrongdoing um any altercation should not be linked to a flipping t-shirt or a hoodie or a down jacket or a polo or a hat it makes no sense but unfortunately i am one of those redax i am one of those redax that associates those kind of things with us with, with that and i can't let it go and the reason why i brought this up is this is concerning palace right the very famous and popular skateboarding brand here in the uk that's also gone global i had one bad interaction i wouldn't really call it bad it was probably an interaction that i wanted a different result out of and it obviously didn't happen and if anything that interaction probably served me well because in the few well you know for years years after i made it my mission never to go out of my way to say hi to anybody that i kind of looked up to or admired or liked on the internet i kind of just kept my love on the internet i'll double tap i'll leave a comment and that'll be it i wouldn't try and kind of communicate with that person in real life because usually it doesn't go the way you want it to go to and you know a recent example i already mentioned on the pod which i kind of broke my oath to do so in real life was when i happened to bump into juliana huxtable at flipping panorama bar in Berghain. 
Um, you know, I enjoyed the set. I thought it was decent. I saw her there standing there with some friends. I went up to say hi and, you know, I enjoyed your set. And the reaction wasn't the greatest, let's say. And again, not, not the person's fault, but you just imagine it from, you know, their point of view, just some strange guy coming up to you in the middle of a dance floor, probably covered in sweat for, you know, the reasons that you'll probably guess, saying that you did a good set and putting his hand out to touch you and stuff. It's like, yeah, do you know what I mean? Go away from me, you absolute ogre so i completely get it so those interactions never work out so it's probably my fault the whole palace thing but i wish i could be that way because the palace story is really interesting for me in that it's still something that i kind of hold on to now even though it doesn't actually matter in the grand scheme of things so i think this is a while back this must have been when they probably first started this might have been around 2015 or something like that or maybe later it was right it was a long time ago it wasn't 2015 it must have been more long ago than that and I, if I'm not mistaken, was one of the first people that bought some t-shirts from them when they put them out on sale because I think the whole law around them was that it was something that they kind of only did for their crew. They had that whole PWBC thing going on and then it kind of was a bit of a cult thing on the underground and it kind of popped and then they started selling some. But it took a while for them to sell to like regular folk who weren't part of their little clique, right? And I was the first person to buy some stuff from them. And if I'm not mistaken, I bought one of my first T-shirts from them, maybe from Slam City Skates. Like I legitimately went to the store in Slam City Skates. I think it might have been in New Street and picked up a T-shirt there. It was the the one with the logo in it, that triangle logo. Um, and, it, and I think on that T-shirt, they printed it on T-shirts that were flipped inside out so you had the seams on the outside which was pretty cool um i bought that in black and white i had like a chanel t-shirt that classic one they did i bought one of the first ones of those so i was really early on like palace it's like oh this is the one right this is how this is basically the uk version of supreme which it obviously turned out to be and they're super successful and they're doing great things so congrats to them but then i was working in some nike store and we had some event i don't know what the event was don't ask me but one of the founders was there and some other people and i guess at the time they weren't really making many things they were just maybe making t-shirts and hoodies or something and then i think at the time i was like oh my god if they had a hat because that's when i was obsessed with snapback hats right with the ones with the with the strap at the back or the fight you call them five panels now but i was obsessed with those i used to wear loads of trucker hats as well and i was like oh man if they make one of those i'd be sick and then i think i saw somebody with an early sample or something and then i guess i saw one of the founders wearing i was like oh cool uh, let me ask and find out if these are coming out and i was asking if they were coming out and then i tried to initiate a conversation to ask about the hat and also kind of prove that i was legit and i liked the brand and it just didn't click or come across well and then i remember, I remember thinking like why am i trying to suck up to or praise these people that are making this brand when you know visually and who they are as people that i would never be their friends anyway right because they're like these guys that i would maybe associate with people who maybe cosplay or larp like you know that like they're working class like you know who do you think of i think of that blondie mccoy kid being as like a good example a lot of their friends were like that they had that kind of look of people who kind of want to look like they're from the ends but they're not really from the ends they wear like loafers with tracksuit bottoms and reeboks and you know white socks and stuff and sovereign rings and stuff just really corny lamey stuff so i remember instantly having an interaction and instantly going into defense mode like they're not cool anyway fuck them it's like when you see a girl that you like and she rejects you you're like oh yeah she's not hot anyway man fuck her in there who cares who cares so i went into that mode straight away and it was funny because from that moment and again this was must i'm gonna say this was 2007 i don't know what year this was whatever year i was working at 1948 at a nike store it was a very very long time ago many things have happened time has passed people don't remember crap who knows who owns it still i don't know if it's the same people i don't know i haven't checked but it was so long ago but from that moment i had that odd interaction i've never worn palace ever again and this is even and this is kind of despite them making you know objectively good things like fair enough the recent stuff with gucci was terrible and that will probably end up at the bottom of an ocean somewhere choking on a baby turtle right absolutely horrendous too much product uh, unnecessary that's probably the opposite of fucking sustainability and it's god awful in my opinion it looks very gaudy uh, i don't know who is trying to service luxury consumers do they care about palace do palace customers care about gucci probably not they're probably just trying to merge you know customer bases and see if it works maybe they can you know sow a seed into some 12 year old from milton Keynes, and maybe when he turns 21 his first pair of loafers will be gucci's i don't really know but regardless it probably isn't the greatest thing they've done but apart from that their collections are objectively great 
the most recent one I remember stumbling across on Hypebeast, I think featured this parka that I would legitimately wear. It doesn't have many logos. It has, I think, one logo on the left-hand sleeve. It's like a fur parka and it's got like fur around the hood and stuff and it's massive, really thick down parka that comes probably above your knees and it comes like an olive or something. And I think it may be a black as well. Like it looks great. I'd legitimately wear it. And they have this other one that they did that comes up like a like a snood type of thing they got great outwear don't get me wrong with it the the umbra and palace stuff i saw the t-shirts like count me out of that that's the sort of stuff you see people wearing at art galleries and stuff but i mean rolling up their cigarettes outside with skateboard underneath their feet you know it's just like always you know come on relaxing and just sometimes get a bus or get a train you're not skating all the way here from crystal palace that like, no one believes you but all that stuff like, i wouldn't really be on that kind of vibe but it's kind of like um I'm kind of punishing myself, you know what I mean? Because no one remembers any of what I'm talking about. It's just like in my own interaction. So when I see Kanye here sipping on his champagne, proudly and happily wearing his Demna Design Balenciaga Adidas collaboration and knowing how Adidas essentially threw him under the bus or ended their relationship with him and essentially took away everything that he holds dear in terms of his billionaire status and the clout that that thing gave him and the money and all that and the prestige and bloody blah, blah, blah. blah and he's still happily wearing those brands despite everything that happened, it kind of puts my little interaction in, it kind of makes it seem really minuscule and it kind of makes me look like an absolute idiot because essentially these are just clothes, who cares? But now time has gone by, so I'm not really at the age now where I'd want to be walking around with a flipping palace triangle on my back, do you know what I mean? that's just not the vibe because I'd imagine much like that joke, what's that joke? I think it's, it's a Crystalia joke, isn't it? I think it's a Chris Leo joke. Like if you've got someone else's name on your back, you're like they basically get to, you know, um, have their way with you. So I'd imagine if you're, if I'm my age now and I've got a palace triangle on my back, that basically means I'm given the permission of that team to do what they want to me when they see me. Do you know what I mean? They can bend me over some rail somewhere and legitimately rail me, which I obviously wouldn't like. So I'll just leave that to the kids. But I saw that Kanye pitch and I just couldn't help but, you know, remember my little silly dilly ants with those people and how it affected my buying decisions in the end. And it's interesting because I think, People like, it happens to a lot of people because I think that's why in general, I think to myself like, it must be difficult to be a celeb in it or to be somebody of notoriety who's making something worthwhile that people want to, you know, say thanks or talk to you, whatever it may be, because for you, it's just any other interaction. Because I guess at the time that I had interaction with those guys that own Palace, that was very early on. They weren't as well known as they are now. That was maybe the first two or three years that they first started a company. So maybe it was legitimately and genuinely weird to have stranger come up to you and say, I like your t-shirt because you're thinking, how does he even know it's me? I don't have that many pictures of me on the internet. Do you know what I mean? There's a of things that can start coming into your head or just a black guy coming and talking to you in the first place because you don't have many black friends, whatever, who knows? But nowadays i'm assuming if someone was to come up to him and say something it'd be a lot easier because you've probably given a conference somewhere you've done interviews you've done fur shoes it's a bit easier but the thing i'm thinking about why it might, must be hard if you're a celeb or somebody of notoriety is that for you it's just any other interaction you have a you have many of them every day even if it's not even if it's non-verbal someone just nodding or you know waving their hand or whatever you have them every single day so for you, it's nothing. But for the person that's waving or nodding, that's everything because they don't get to see you all the time because, you know, they just, why would they get to see you? You're the person that's making something. You're over there living your cool life, doing cool things. But then if you do make the tiniest bit of effort to acknowledge them and just be cool, that actually solidifies that relationship forever. Like I mentioned it many times on this pod, the times that I bumped into um, Dion Dublin and I forgot the other guy he was with. He was another, another, um, kind of cult hero in a Premier League striker, black dude he was over, I forgot his name. But I remember bumping into Dion Dublin in the Alibi. And this is a story that I say for millions of years. And this was back in the day and he was super nice. So now every time people say Dion Dublin sucks and they hate his commentary, I'm first to jump in and defend him because of that one brief interaction I had with him where I was probably off my face on flipping MD anyway. And I hardly even remember what happened. Another one is Harry Styles. I had bumped into Harry Styles as well into... um what you're in at the alibi also exchanged like five words max and i just saw him from afar i remember five words max went away had my drink sitting down but i just observed him how he was interacting with people coming up to him asking for a picture just being always cool talking to his friends hanging out chatting up some girls he just seemed lovely and i and till till this day you cannot say a bad word about harry styles around me in my presence just because of that one interaction i had with the guy so for a celebrity it must be weird because 
every interaction you have with a fan is just like an interaction you've had with many other fans it's not that special but for the fan themselves it really is but then if you're a celeb if you make a little bit of effort that fan's going to be your fan forever but then you know making that kind of effort times in that by 30 interaction 50 interactions 100 interactions a day that's a lot of time then you don't get the time to do the cool thing that they like you for so you either have to kind of go to flipping private members club and hang out there all the time you know walk you know transport yourself in flipping dark sedans everywhere um walk around with security say no to pictures which will go viral and people will start hating you online it's a really thankless task to be somebody that's a celebrity or well-known and try and navigate the real world because everyone expects a lot from you you're trying to do your own thing they attach a you know an outcome there like myself that's why that's probably why i messed up because i was outcome i was outcome dependent in that interaction i was expecting a particular outcome it didn't happen then i lost my rag which is clearly redacted clearly immature clearly loser behavior but at that time at that age um you know in that period i was like no they they'll rate this and i'm one of the first people that bought their stuff like it's like no you're not you're not one of the first people you're one of hundreds you're one of thousands probably they don't care <laughs> i mean it's not that big of a deal you're definitely not the center of their universe and probably i was never their target audience anyway Do you know what i mean you see the kids that, that line up outside the palace these days they don't look like me <laughs> but yeah but i saw that card in your picture i was like rob and he's he's got a better heart than me for sure he's got a better heart than me then next i went to talk about quickly here the um the kind of music event that happened at the troxy in london recently or just the other day actually i didn't end up going there was a plan to go my friend me and i were, were planning on going but then i think when the tickets sold out super quickly the plan was oh let's just buy them on ticket swap closer to the date but then we went on ticket swap and the tickets were going for like a hundred quid or something crazy which was insane and i was like no nah, i'm not paying a hundred pounds to go to the troxy not no way having that in any way shape or form so i kind of just sacked on ahead and also maybe some residue after effects of sober october i'm just less on kind of going to those events and paying that kind of big money i would rather just use that money to go and do some sort of um you know trip or go to a nice restaurant or something i don't want to first spend it at a club but regardless kind of music are doing good they're successful they're blowing up um clearly that you know party was in demand because it sold out flipping four times over every time tickets kept coming up on tickets what they kept going and you know another one get listed and going again so there's clearly a demand for it all the comments on all the posts recent ones um, before the party were just people requesting tickets so there was clearly clearly a lot of fans out there that didn't really agree with my prognosis in terms of not going and decided to stay at home but the thing i wanted to mention and kind of touch upon was this what you can kind of see from the cover image of this instagram post that's taken from the troxy page right yeah the troxy london page you can kind of see oh look they had like some south korean artists playing uh the, a couple of days before i guess pretty cool but if you can kind of see from this cover image here of the post which i'll obviously click on but look at the amount of phones that are up in the air at this event um, for kind of music the london showcase at the troxy imagine i was just thinking about this because just the other day um i was talking to some people and they were mentioning oh how amazing fabric is nowadays without the flipping no phone policy and then i think they also linked to a post that fabric put up recently where they basically were subtly reminding people hey by the way we don't have a no we have a no first policy in the club please respect it and um also thank you people for you know respecting the flipping of phone policy thing it was a pretty subtle not subtle reminder to keep the stick on your phone don't be a doofus and people that i was talking to which i agree with are saying how much better the club is now that there's no photos and obviously a lot of it has to do with the fact that i think in general fabric have gone out of their way to really change the programming and kind of open themselves up to different types of people in terms of punters promoters djs and whatnot it's just not the same type of you know scene that it was prior which you maybe classify as like you know older white dudes and stuff playing the same minimal type music now it's definitely changed even the rest residents are really kind of eclectic and varied in terms of their taste and what they look like and where they're from even though that shouldn't matter but you know in terms of just giving the place a different vibe they get different promoters in there different promotions different scenes it's all really working on the up and up but i think that final little ingredient with the no photos in there it makes that place worthwhile and i remember i mentioned it previously in another pod that how i had a nightmare getting in there and the searches are horrendous and whatnot right and it feels really intrusive and it can kind of be a bit of a vibe killer the thing about it is even with all that said 
it's still a great place to go just because the vibe in there is about raving and dancing and getting on it and and whatnot it's not really about taking pictures and recording yourself and having a flash on all day long and that no photo policy has legitimately changed the entire feel of fabric when you go in there so i cannot imagine what it must be like to go to fabric or to go to fold or any other places that maybe have a no photo policy or they have a crowd of people that don't necessarily care about pictures all the time i can't imagine how it must feel to go to that and then suddenly you're at a kind of music place where everybody there kind of wants to be seen because essentially kind of music you know there are they are a collective of people who who don't shy away from the spotlight right they they enjoy the attention 100 percent do they're essentially dj influencers who really are good at djing but they kind of you know carry themselves online like influency type things so everyone's there want to take a picture everyone there wants to show off their outfit because they're also to give them credit one of the few DJs on the scene now who all don't wear black, right? I don't think I've seen any of them wear black t-shirts. They're always wearing some sort of color, whether it's a white, whether it's a green, whether it's a blue, they're always wearing some sort of like, you know, non-black color in terms of a t-shirt even. Um, they definitely care about their fashion a bit more. So I'd imagine the crowd probably reflects that. And you got all these people wanting to stunt, wanting to look cool and stuff. And, you know, wanting to capture the moment because they do share a lot of fan moments on their social media accounts. So then that basically creates what you see there on the screen, a sea of hands holding up their phones, trying to record drops. And that's another thing also, the music they play, this type of melodic house type stuff they play, mixtures of ama piano, mixtures of deep house, um, lounge music type vibe. Uh, it kind of always has this really, you know, um, what you call it? not scenic but it has this really kind of awe inspiring type drop but it never really goes anywhere it's sort of like you know there's this high crescendo and then it kind of, there's this kind of build up and a crescendo and then it kind of just falls and flatters to deceive but still that moment is good to see and capture on your phone because the lights will go off smokes will go off maybe lasers maybe some confetti so everyone wants to capture it so i can understand why this has become like a thing but God almighty, the amount of phones is a complete vibe killer for me. And I thought I'd never be that guy because I think in general in London, we don't really have the capability to do that because the punters here aren't that enamored with the whole no taking pictures, of, you know, thing in clubs. You know, people are a little bit more, you know, it's my phone. I can do whatever the hell I want. Or even if you tell them to not take a pictures, they'll still take the sticker off and do it anyway. So that can happen quite often. But I feel like Fabric is a good example of, that experiment or my hypothesis clearly not being true because fabric i feel like has the most rebellious crowd and people that kind of do what they want to do but even when i went there recently um to see what's his face dave clark and renee wise i was amazed by how little people were taking the pictures and there was always a security guard on the dance floor just perusing and making sure everything was cool he would kind of remind the person hey we don't allow that but for the most part everyone was just legitimately dancing and having a good time and it really did add to the vibe so i can't imagine what it's like the opposite when you go to a place where everybody's got their phone out everyone wants to stunt everyone wants to capture that moment and share it on their social media which i necessarily or you know just to kind of have it on their phone even some of them don't even share it on this so that's a weird thing there's some people who just don't even share it. They just have it on their phone. I don't know where that goes, where that lives or whatnot, but it's just such a weird thing. But this is courtesy of the Labyrinth Events um, Instagram page. Uh, it says here, the kind of music crew well and truly landed in London last night. Love from the bottom of our hearts for the energy and all the brought to Troxy. Five years since our first London showcase with the crew and the vibes only get better and better every year. Yeah, I'd imagine the flipping crowd, the size of the crowd probably is a lot more than what it was five years ago because they have blown up in another way it's absolutely insane how much they're blown up they've, they've legitimately become like a a normie kind of like dj crew favorite in the same way that you know a regular guy that you work with at your nine to five may be aware of solomon that's what kind of music has basically turned into that kind of level of fame which is really crazy that's when you're like commanding those 50 100 grand you know what i mean to play in certain places that's when you command those big fees after reading that flipping solomon article in the isn't the atlantic or the new yorker crazy and it? it gets paid like i think at one time i'd be for you was getting paid like 100 grand per gig to do these um i don't think it was before the plus one shows i think it was another time but anyway regardless go back to kind of music this is a clip taken from the labyrinth events uh, instagram page so you can see the sea of phones are just what the vibe was saying on the inside from what i saw some of the clips on some of the instagram stories the sound wasn't the greatest from my opinion but i i think that's more of an issue with troxy it's probably not a place to set up well to accommodate for 
dance music in that kind of way acoustically and maybe just a volume overall they can't go over a certain decibel amount which doesn't make good for a live audience that is going to be talking and chatting because all the clips i saw i heard many i could overhear people speaking but then some clips i saw some people who were at the front the sound the sound was perfect much like some other events i've gone to which is the same sort of vibe that's the one thing that is always a bit of a letdown in london when it comes to the sound i think overall our production people um, the people that do the lights and all that all, all that malarkey they're always top notch we do have some of the best but when it comes to the actual volume of things it's always flat as the sea which is a real real issue but it is what it is but this is a clip and I'm gonna, I think the rest of it is just pictures I'm pretty sure let's see Not a lot of dancing, not a lot of standing around, but it does look fun. It kind of is like a mix between like a live gig and a DJ performance anyway, especially how they're on the stage with the big cloud kind of music logo above them and whatnot, the lights, how it's set up. It, it does feel more like a live gig type thing, which might be the evolution that we might see with some people going forward. They might actually turn, or maybe some fans see people, see DJs less as DJs and more like artists anyway. They don't actually go to dance you're going to see them legitimately which i've always kind of never really understood because if i'm going to go see dj harvey i know what it looks like i'm not going to just stand there in front of him watch him dj i want to just be in the presence of him playing music and hear it coming through the speakers and be touching people and stuff and sharing a moment oh my god you remember this like all that stuff is more what i'm into as opposed to just standing there and watching the person play all day but some people treat djs like that which is a interesting um way to view it got a picture look at that mate absolutely ram jammer absolutely ram jammer like i said they sold this over like three times four times over the demand was insane insane demand I, that's one of the things i love about dance music and it's something that's only I think particular to UK crowds and maybe Italians. We have this thing that we do where we sing along to music, like dance music that sometimes doesn't have lyrics. This obviously does, but sometimes we'll hum along to a bass line, uh, to a B or to a drop. And it's hilarious because when you go to a, let's say Berlin club and you do that, people legitimately give you dirty looks. Sometimes even if you whistle and stuff, people give you dirty looks, they don't like it. It's not like a thing to sing along. You just have to kind of let the stuff play in silence sort of thing. It's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> I like those squares wherever they got there behind the booth. That's pretty cool. Those little squares with the LEDs and stuff. That looks really nice. The production is amazing, to be fair. It does look really, really good. Makes sense, and it's a Troxy, so they're going to have a way to produce a show, make it look visually impressive. And look, there's people up there on the balcony and stuff. That looks pretty cool. What is that called? A mezzanine? I don't know what those are things. What's that thing called? The top when you're in like a theatre? you got like this ground, and then you got this bit here. Let's go to the next one look at that absolutely rammed and then of course kind of music are fans of that kind of packed dj booth thing which i'm not a fan of but then when you go to the party and you're there you always want to get back there right i'm saying this now sitting here and i'm not a fan of it and i hate it but when you're in the party and you're off the do 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 you definitely want to get back there and be a part of this whole nonsense it's just funny isn't it? it's nothing about this is special you're just behind the booth i guess it most likely this is probably the vip area too to be fair to them they probably sold tickets and then this is where your vip thing because i think the last time i went to one of the events the vip section was kind of here at the back i don't know which one it was but yeah i think so that would be smart right you do it either here or on the side but um yeah like it's funny man when you sit at home you're like this is lame but when you're at the party you always want to be there behind it which is again nothing because you're just standing behind some people that are playing music and you're not the one playing so i mean even though there's some dorks and flipping cringe artists that get there and stand right next to dj and start doing their hands as if they're performing like put your hands down that person's a star step away give them room don't be a donut but you know what what do i know the cloud thing from behind again and actually let's see some 
I want to see some uh, things from people that are actually there. Actually, let's see. Let's go on the Troxy hashtag or explore thing on Instagram. I want to see images of people who are there. So less of the brand things and the promoter so we can see what the vibe was actually like. Let's see if we can get some pieces up on here. I would say this this clip that I've not heard of before just sounds a bit empty, but then maybe it's just, it's more so the, what you call it, the knobs and stuff. Maybe they've taken out the hi-hats and stuff or the bass. It just feels a bit hollow. Maybe it's just a clip though. Look at the phones. Look at the sea of phones. Can you see it here? The sea of phones. I know my video is kind of chopping up and I'm dropping frames, but the sea of phones is just crazy. Where does videos going anyway? No, they're not going anywhere. It's just a waste of time. I don't understand it. The rule for me always is like you go, you might take a couple, maybe when you're there, when you get there, maybe at the peak moment and maybe when you're about to leave or whatever, just document your night if you want to get on the Instagram stories. But that's about it. What more videos do you need? Like, unless you're doing tune IDs and stuff, but still, I don't know. It just takes you out of the moment. It puts everyone else's stuff around you. Usually, even myself, I'm quite strict and diligent when it comes to pictures. If I'm taking some, or so if I'm taking one long one or I'm taking a couple, but I'm not going to be pulling up my phone every two minutes. But what I've noticed sometimes when you're at a rave and you're minding your business and you're actually focused on dancing and having a good time and getting off whatever you're getting off on, when someone else pulls out their phone, you automatically want to pull out your phone. It's like when someone goes to the bar, oh, do you want a drink? Yeah, why not? Let me get a drink, actually. It just encourages bad behavior. <laughs> Sounds a bit better there, but it just sounds like it's outside. That's the only thing. It just sounds outdoorsy. The amount of phones is just wild to me. You legitimately can't see the DJ playing just through the sea of arms in the air <laughs> holding the phones. <laughs> what an absolutely crazy affair man don't get me wrong we've evolved as humans because we do that all the time with technology and you know societally and and just how we interact with the world and whatnot with our phones where people have the ability now to essentially use their phone um uh separate from their their body they can just use it and keep dancing and having a good time so it's not even like they look because sometimes the sad thing was we see somebody holding their phone up to record something at a rave or something whatever it may be and they're looking at the person performing who they're in front of through their phone that's a really depressing part of it but with this it feels like people are holding their phone up to, to the side still watching the person play and having a good time but they have to make sure they record it because if they don't record it no one's going to believe that they were there <laughs> but god almighty this is brutal but the front doesn't look too bad let me see some else's clips so other people got their videos and stuff but yeah look the amount of pictures people are taking look see the pictures have been taken in front I'm also wondering if Apple, I'm pretty sure they do. I'm pretty sure when Apple present the new phones and stuff or whenever some new iPhone comes out, they do make a point to stress how good phones are in low light, don't they? And I wonder if a lot of it has to do with them having data on their back end of how many people go out at night and take pictures and record stuff like when it comes to gigs and festivals and whatnot. This must be like a big market for those type of phones so to make sure that the lens is able to kind of take in as much light as possible and the flash is amazing the videos are made so that you can record you know videos like this and you can look semi-decent and it can sound semi-decent too with the speakers and whatnot the microphone that definitely must be a consideration because people don't stop taking their phones out so they're getting encouraged by the manufacturers of the phones and the events themselves because how they produce and the lights and you know the bells and whistles all over them and whatnot and of course their fellow raver that pulls out their phone every two seconds you know it's hard not to do it <laughs> This 
person was at the back. I want to see someone who's at the front or at the back and to hear what it is. Because all, all this stuff sounds really good, but I want to see somebody that was poor, that wasn't a stat, that wasn't at the VIP bit. Let me see. Let me see someone that you know was just doing their thing with their friends in the back and didn't have a chance to go right to the front. Oh, yeah, see that look how tinny that sounds, mate. God. <laughs> Of course, there's some donut with an LED hat on. Yeah, man. Anyway, it looks fun. It looked good. I guess everyone had their time and enjoyed themselves. So big up everybody that ended up going. I see loads of smiling faces there. People had fun. That's what basically matters when it comes to this sort of stuff. They probably sold a bunch of merch as well. The whole and me and, and Adam Port and all those guys over there as well. So big up them for having a successful party and people coming out. I'm kind of happy I didn't go because I'm not really about that vibe to be honest. I want to enjoy myself and not have the, you know not be disturbed every two seconds of people with phones and stuff but again that's the beauty of london club nights that's why we have some of the i think the best clubbing kind of lands you know what does it say we have the best probably range when it comes to club nights you can go anywhere and listen to you know an R&B night to hip hop to trance to techno to jungle to break beats whatever you want there is a specialist night for you to go to and listen to that sort of stuff there may be even clubs that only play that type of music for sure the only thing that's the worst for us is the flip of a coin whether or not the sound system is going to be good whether or not you're going to get you know vibed out or you're going to have a, you're going to be yeah whether or not you're going to encounter somebody who's a vibe killer in terms of security or the other staff members whatever else happens in the club the sound might be off the equipment might be terrible and the person playing might be struggling you have no idea that's a flip of a coin that's the only issue that kind of lets us down and of course the opening times are bloody terrible so and again, oh, that's why Troxy was, was was busy too. No, they were open until 6 a.m. That's one of the reasons also why it was really busy. Because again, we don't have many places in London that are open that late, which explains why there's places that are open that late, Fold being a good example, and Fabric, why they're always so busy. Because there's not many places you can go to listen to that type of music after 4 a.m. or maybe sometimes 2 if you're in central London. There's not many places that you can go. So, you know, with kind of music being as popular as they are, Truxy staying open until 6 a.m., it being in a decent enough location for most people to go to and get home. It was always going to be a, a banger of a moment, a banger of an event, and it's always going to sell out. But still, you have to do it in it. You have to actually sell out in order to make it work. So they did it. It worked. So congrats to them. Moving on from that one, I wanted to touch upon this, which is a random topic to talk about because it doesn't really make any sense in the grand scheme of things. But I was randomly listening to Your Mum's House episode number 682 that featured Stavros Halkaius, you know, the comedian formerly of Come Town fame, who's now doing his own thing. And he was on there, you know, giving me the LOLs. Many, many chuckles were had and clearly one of the better guests that they've had on there and somebody that clearly gets their humour, was a fan of them prior and just somebody I think you definitely end up seeing more on your mum's house. And he made this point about his old Instagram, you know, pictures and the stuff he used to do in order to kind of get himself out there. And Christina P will say, oh, I'm a big fan of it. And he was talking about, you know, what it was, what he was thinking about when he was doing some of these pictures and the law behind them and whatnot. And he made a really telling and interesting observation that I feel like relates a lot to female DJs and something I've been thinking about randomly that connected to this in connected to this picture that I had that I kind of saw on Instagram the other day of a DJ that I like called Law Croft who had to put out a bit of a disclaimer in the comments because she got some unwanted attention from some of the fans or some of the randoms that happened to stumble across the picture. But this is Stavros talking about some of his more racier, seductive, lewd, you know, vomit-inducing pictures, however you want to frame it. And I think he made a really interesting point about the double standards that exist when men post these type of pictures. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can I smell talent or yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. No, that was the yeah, this this was the golden age. It is a but it is this really is a dude a lesson in confidence for people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well that's the thing. It's just like I also <sighs> it kind of started as a joke because it was like God. you know, not to be too fucking, you know, commenting on on like, you know, uh too much shit with media representation and stuff, but it was like at first I was like, let me just put 
a fat man in the position any hot woman would be yes. in advertising. <laughs> yeah. And no, if that's a hot woman in any of those pictures, no one reads those as a joke. Right? right, right. But the simple fact that a fat man is in there, yeah. it's hilarious. Yeah. And that was that was it was like a, a critique of like, this is like fat people are a joke in society. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. Where it's like, and hot women can't they they're automatically sex objects. Whereas yes. like a fat man is just a fu you know. And then I was like, and it started as kind of that. But then I was like, these are fun as shit to do. Sure. And then it was like, why don't I just like override the joke thing? And then I realized, <laughs> for some people, no, they are actually finding you. They do want to fuck you. Yeah, this. that's so a, it's like the another joke, layer to it. It's another layer. And it was like, and then I was like, let's fucking write it out. I like doing these. These are fun. I was getting my dick sucked off it. And I was like, let's keep going, which is the that's which hilarious way to end it. But I thought that was really interesting because it made me think about this little brief um, interaction on my end. I had with one of Law Croft's pictures. And of course, you know, most of you will be full aware of who Law Croft is a very good and capable DJ who I happen to see at fold for the first time playing. I'm not going to, I think it was alongside D Dan, a pretty decent lineup, isn't it? I've been to some good parties, man. God damn it. Um, thank God for Fold and their booking. So she played alongside D Dan. Um, most of you might be familiar with her. Also, she had that kind of viral moment where um, she was, um, had an emotional reaction to a tune that reminded her of some of her Ukrainian friends who I guess she was kind of, you know, really connected with in terms of the scene and that kind of got her going. But in terms of a DJ, definitely somebody that I rate and have a good, a lot of time for. But clearly from the picture you can see on the Instagram, she's a very, very attractive woman, right? A very, very good looking woman, objectively speaking, whether you swing that way or don't, there's no way you can look at her and say she's ugly, right? Clearly not ugly. And the funny thing about it was that this picture kind of stumbled on my feed right stumbled <laughs> on my feed this one and it's funny how instagram works in general because this is from three days ago that this picture stumbled upon my feed and i only saw it the other day so very strange the algorithm how it works but essentially she posts pictures of herself on instagram and if you're listening to the podcast she's wearing what looks like to be some sort of pvc ish type number i'm not too sure it looks a little bit translucent it reminds me a little bit of what ccp do if you know the brand if you don't do your googles but it looks pretty decent pretty sick and this is what she was going to wear for the show conceptual which is very fitting for the show and what they're about and just her in the bathtub sitting there is her with the top on and the pants on looking kind of translucent you can kind of use your imagination another picture there with the with the cheeks out you know doing the damn thing and clearly feeling herself right as you should you're about to go to this amazing party they're known for being a little bit more xxx rated in terms of conceptual and what they're about and clearly you're feeling free feeling Feeling good you want to go there perform and part of the performance is what you're wearing it's part of the attire that is what it is all about but in context of what Stavros was talking about if you're a very attractive woman it must be so difficult to navigate through life because if you're attractive most likely you're going to be comfortable in your skin it doesn't matter if you're thin fat or whatever you're just going to be comfortable in your own skin and usually when women are comfortable in their own skin they want to show it off they want to display their wares they want to um take cool pictures take cute pictures whatever it may be but for some reason every time women do take cute pictures for whatever reason especially if a woman does that kind of comatose open mouthing the comments are always crazy there's never not a time where a woman could take a picture of themselves looking hot or feeling cute or feeling themselves and not have a the audience whether it's a guy or woman audience whoever it may be sexualize them obviously it's going to be men but you know i have to be kind of politically correct when i say this but the predominantly male audience is always going to sexualize a woman when it comes to these pictures so from what stavros was saying you couldn't imagine a scenario where Lord Cross could cover herself in chicken wings or, you know, kebab meat or flipping whatever else and it not be sexualized. It's always going to be sexualized. I mean, oh, what's underneath those meat slices? I would lick every piece off of it, you know, um, put what you call it, run that through the salad, run that through the garden, whatever it may be, right? Someone's going to make some sort of comment and she kind of touched on it herself when the comments were a bit crazy. I'm not going to scroll down because I don't want the comments to come up and it'd be rude, but she decided to post this after she posted whatever she posted, right? Post the caption, you know, tagging the people that need to be tagged and then a comment underneath it was funny that she posted like, P.S. Choosing to be sexy is not the same thing as being sexualized by others. Read that again if you struggle with this, which was clearly, I think, a sort of like telling off of the corny mofos that are in the comment letting her know hey i would do all sorts of things to you if you gave me the chance which is clearly not what you want to hear or you just want to get a cute fit off so 
it also made me think in general about how difficult it must be if you are a female DJ coming up in a scene and you want to try and make a name for yourself because let's be honest we can lie if we want we can be naive if we want but we know in some way shape or form having the ability to look you know good on social media is going to help your career whether or not it's actually going to help you get bookings i don't think it's an actual thing when i say career i think you know there's different elements that are in your career whether it kind of means your you know how well known you are in terms of your face and whatnot your follower account you actually got fifteen thousand, right that's all pretty good the, the the ratio of the likes as well is pretty high so all that stuff is going to work and be quite beneficial to you so it might not get you direct bookings, but it's going to maybe put you in front of certain people who might see certain things and might want to pass it on to others, blah, 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 blah. And there are stories that I've read online. You know, one example being the girlfriend of Etap Kyle, Daria, I forgot her surname. She mentioned on one podcast interview how she used to be uh, a topless DJ. And I think it's big in China where you'd kind of go around and play in these horrible clubs for like Chinese businessmen. And obviously the shtick was that you'd play topless and sometimes the girls would be quite creative and cover themselves with, uh, you know, paint or put something sheer on. But essentially, if you wanted to get the big bucks and get tipped, you had to have the nipples out, which is a bit crazy, right? If you want to become a DJ, like here's what you have to do. You have to get the tits out. But that's what he had to start with. And then, you know, she went from that and then turning into one of the, you know, well-known and biggest DJs out here in the scene and doing great things and crushing it and playing at Burger and quite often, you know, back to back with a fiance and that actually living a life. But that's the start you have to make. And I've also heard on the scene, there's many people who I was surprised to learn about who have a history or have a background working in sex work, which obviously, you know, I don't have an issue with, but imagine if you came out and said to somebody, Hey, I was in sex work prior to becoming a DJ, the comments that you would get, if already you're getting bad enough comments, just because you happen to look good in clothes or sometimes not many clothes or not a lot of clothes. Imagine the comments you'd get if you let people know that, Hey, I used to be a sex worker. People would go absolutely nuts. So you had to have to keep that secret and kind of to yourself. And I was wondering as well, on top of it with being a dj a general you know i'm on, I'm on my little tiny journey that i'm currently going on even though i've been doing it for flipping more than 10 years and stuff right and promoting on doing whatever i do but in terms of concentrating and actually focusing on it maybe it's been the last i don't know five or so years but even i can see that as hard as it is to make it in general i don't think it matters who you are it just must be that tad bit extra difficult when you're an attractive girl just to navigate the scene because you're not too sure if people are giving you the time of day because they secretly want to, you know, do adult stuff to you. You don't know if people are answering your emails because of that also. You don't know if you're getting to certain places because of what you look. It just must be a, such a weird place to be, to kind of navigate around because there's constant, there's this constant reminder all the time that people are sexualizing you, sexualized. Even though you're not doing it yourself, you're just wearing what you want to wear and being cool and being comfortable in your own skin. Others are kind of giving you that kind of hype and love or that attention. And then also on the other side of things, maybe sometimes it's beneficial it can sometimes work for your career it can legitimately sometimes maybe take you and put you in certain rooms or put you in front of certain people or bring you to the attention of certain people all those things can definitely be um, true at the same time so it must be quite a hard place to kind of work at because you'd be doing yourself a disservice if you're a girl and you're good looking to cover yourself with a turtleneck and wear a flipping hat that covers half your face right you you, you should maybe lean into it a little bit but then how far do you lean into it? You know what I mean? You don't want people to just keep looking at you as this person, but you also don't, you know, you, you need to pay the bills. You want to achieve, you want to kind of achieve your dreams, um, whatever it may be. All those things kind of play into your mind at the same time. So I don't know. I'm just thinking about it in general. And I think it must be such a difficult place to be if you are somebody that wants to get into music and you are kind of, you know, um, what people would deem to be conventionally attractive. How do you navigate around the scene that way? How does it make sense? How do you set the boundaries? Um, how people talk to you? All those things are things that you can't control, really, in some way, shape, or form. Because the moment you put out your mess, the moment you put yourself out there, you're kind of um, giving up a little bit of that kind of con controlling of the narrative, controlling of how people interact with you when you kind of put yourself, especially if you're putting yourself out there, like kind of, you know, skimpily clad and whatnot. You don't know who that's going to invite attention wise. It just must be a difficult thing to kind of wrangle and to kind of get right in your head or not. 
or not maybe it's just like a thing of like look give me the money i'll wear whatever you want me to wear i don't care what you say in the comments you guys are all nerds <laughs> whatever keep it moving buster and they just kind of collect your checks but i'm sure it must be a really difficult thing when you just you just legitimately you you bought an outfit for a gig you think you look cute you want to put a quick cute picture out there maybe a first trap who knows maybe you want to get the attention of somebody who knows maybe you don't maybe it's just legitimately selfishly all for you and then people are in the comments telling you you know uh about the activity in their trousers like and you're like okay good to know in it good to know don't tell me again <laughs> better yet unfollow me <laughs> better yet here's a block you know what i mean it must be so weird honestly it must be so difficult to navigate but you know these are one of the things you kind of have to i guess put up it's probably maybe part of the price you have to pay if you're then going to be successful as a dj in general right this is just maybe part of the price you have to pay you have to be willing to pay it, it is what it is <laughs> i don't really know but hey what can we do let's move on and the next thing i want to talk about here was these this is courtesy of Hypebeast and it features an early look at a pair of Run The Jewels Nike Dunk Highs and or SB sorry Nike Dunk SB well, no, Nike SB Dunk Highs Nike Skateboarding Dunk you know the deal and the reason why I'm going to mention them because just the other day I was thinking to myself how tired I am of seeing the dunk shape they've been absolutely rinsed if there's one thing Nike know how to do is to market a shoe and to rinse it that's one thing they're gonna do there's no way Nike puts out a shoe that you haven't seen before or that just drops out of the blue you've always seen them and when they do eventually drop even if they're out of the blue and it's a model that hasn't been retro it's a model that hasn't been put out in a while they're gonna rinse it and grind it into the ground and the dunks have been absolutely rinsed to smithereens and the funny thing is that nike have tried to do the dunk thing many times i feel like but i feel like now it hit because everybody's like a mini sneaker reseller and everyone wants to be you know their own version of flipping stock x and whatnot or whatever it may be or just some famous reseller on social media that stands in front of a ferrari or in front of a garage or whatever doing that weird face they do so everyone wants to do that so it kind of if you're going to redo the, the dunks again and bring that hype back this is the best time to do it because i feel like throughout my time being a sneakerhead there's been various times where nike have tried to force a dunk thing and it just hasn't caught on no one's cared but now those same dunks that i was able to buy with ease at flipping slam city skates and stuff are now flipping grails that people are paying you know three times the retail value on or five or six or whatever maybe which is insane to think that like even dunks like hunter dunk sbs that i used to wear every single day to flipping you know you know out and about as like my beaters and my bike and stuff are now really big shoes that people care about like the reese forbes i had a few pairs of those those are big shoes the diamond coast supplies even at the time when i had them they were quite popular those have become like grails as well and go for mil go for millions go for hundreds sometimes even thousands i guess depending on the probably the style i'm assuming dunk high diamond supplies probably not too much maybe definitely the lows that came out originally that i had but things are clearly hitting and i was getting kind of bored of them getting kind of over them then of course as per usual with nike they put out so many different shoes so many different colorways of the same shoe eventually you're going to see one that you like it's just a lot of averages and this run this pair of shoes um collaboration with run the jewels is clearly something that i'll be all over and if you're just listening to the show it's a dunk high that features what looks like a combination of pink and black but the pink the kind of fuchsia pink color goes around the mud guard around the laces and the back of section of the dunk and it looks like it's a pony hair that you'd see on a usually the pony hair thing was only kind of um reserved for year of you know chinese new year dunks or chinese new year nikes right uh, for some reason there would always be some sort of animal ha animal print or hair fabric thing on a shoe if it was like a chinese new year shoe um, that's when you'd see it or if it was a hiroshi fujiwara collaboration like a japanese designer would do something like that have like exotic fur material i guess they moved away from that but it's a combination of that kind of pony hair type horse hair whatever it is um hair that's on the top of the dunk and then the black bits of the dunk are tumbled leather which i love i love that tumbled leather type feel i think they work really well on high shoes in general because they kind of crease really well they kind of mold your foot a little bit and they usually have a higher quality the leather than you'd get on kind of regular leather shoes and then the swoosh itself looks like it's a bit bejeweled maybe kind of a play on the word run the jewels and they've got also a little um lace jewel here that, that the bottom two that's also kind of bejeweled also to make it look like a little bit like a diamondy type thing 
it obviously shows off more on the lace thing less on the swoosh because the swoosh obviously is not a lot of surface area to make it look like a diamond or look kind of jewelry but i do like the combination the color combo because i'm a big fan of two color combo three color combo shoes when it comes to nike especially when it's these type of panels on like an air force one air jordan one a dunk whatnot i think once you start changing too many colors on the pan one too many too many panel colors it can get a bit crazy but when you just keep it classic kind of college type things with like you know one base color the color on the essence and then maybe the soul is different or something maybe the swoosh it kind of is a bit more of a better balance and i feel like this black pink sort of like you know what's that what's called an acetate or grand granite or whatever midsole there i love that they look really really good like amazingly good this is giving me flashbacks of working in the stock room we see this box is in the back but i'm actually a big fan of these like i, I would legitimately wear them and just the other day i was saying i've had enough with dunks and you know this is why this is why companies like nike and new balance and stuff why they pump out so many different colors of the same shoe that to me get boring because they know eventually one can hit and they know a customer like myself will go back the one that's complaining about stuff and you'll pay for it and you'll buy it that's why they don't probably listen to us because they know we're full of shit we can say what we want oh it's getting boring it's the same thing but you're gonna buy it anyway do you know what i mean so just shut up let us do our thing and we're gonna bring something out that you'll like but i love these man these are really good i'd wear them today and, and I, they'll probably end up being you know it happened with these i saw some comments already especially on the hypebeast article where they say oh these are crap these are hideous but what end up happening somebody well known will wear a pair and then suddenly they'll become popular again everyone will want them that's what ends up always happening somebody well known somebody with some clout somebody that's well known um somebody that's maybe a style icon wherever it may be or you know whatever they will wear them and then suddenly they'll look good that's all it takes one person to wear them and then it kind of just takes off and goes the other way so i can definitely see that happening for sure but i love these rundle jewels donkey high sbs they look pretty cool what's the information about the time and they're coming out don't read the article could be full of nonsense it says more deals yet to be confirmed but these are rumored to be releasing on killer mike's birthday which is april the 20th of 2023 so a bit of a long way to wait for them to come out maybe not maybe six months right is it five or six months to wait for them to eventually drop but i for one cannot wait when they eventually do because you know as i mentioned i was already over the dunks and now i'm suddenly back on it again and what better way to get back on it again than these flipping bad boys they look great and i'm a big fan of dunk highs anyway i think they look better than the lows personally for me even though i have worn a lot of lows over the years and plus for the most part dunk high sbs don't have the thick tongue which i always love because i hate that padded tongue personally for me i'm not really a big fan of it on a dunk i think dunks class dunk, classic dunks are just a regular thin tongue look better um than the thick padded tongue that you'd get on an sb which is why if i even if i had old pairs of sb which i don't have i sold all of mine i'd consider actually gutting out the tongues and just making them flat i know that's flipping sacrilege but they're my shoes i'm not gonna if, if i had them i wouldn't resell them still back in the day i obviously did because i need money for flipping uni but if i had those shoes right now i'd just gut the tongues because i feel like they look far better profile while it's just like flat instead of that unnecessary fat puff of tongue thing because the rest of the shoe is pretty thin and flat also to have that fat tongue just hanging out there just doesn't make much sense to me personally but again what do i know when it comes to this sort of stuff in it what do i know but yeah check those out hopefully they drop soon and um we'll see those what would they say yeah, 2023 right when it's flipping killer mike's birthday which is a pretty swaggy time for them to come out in it so big up killer mike for being the don when it comes to that sort of stuff then I also wanted to feature these. These are part of, this is from Hypebeast also, sorry, for, uh, featuring 1017 Alix, um, all black mono boots. I love these a lot because I think I mentioned prior that I forgot what collection it was. It must have been a recent one. It must have been like 2023 or 2020, not 2020, 2022 maybe. Let's check it quickly on my phone because my computer is going to take ages to flip and load this up but i think it was a the recent collection of the leaks where they had this great denim suit look with the white boot and i think the white slides i don't think they're boots actually i think they might have been white slides they're one of my favorite looks in that entire collection and i saw the shoes i was like oh these are nice in it this is like his version of a foam runner or like of a balenci of a bottega veneta puddle boot that he did which i thought was brilliant yeah it was the last collection actually it was a spring 2023 collection of the leaks um, if you do get it up in your own time, you'll see 
look number what is it look number 28 and i'll actually put it up on the screen so you'll see it if you're watching the show but if you're listening if you can type in yourself spring 2023 men's wear you'll see a you know the elite's collection there was a look number 28 that featured a white boot that was similar to what we see on the screen it may be the same i think it is because i think they had a, they had a boot and also had a slide that they did and i guess they had a white one last season now they're bringing out a black or maybe the black is coming out no i think the black is from this collection actually um, if i'm looking at these other pictures it looks like the black is from this collection also because the next picture after 28 29 features a model where no picture number look number 31 actually features the pair of them on there and i was a fan of them straight away um just because of the shape the silhouette um how bulky they are the thickness of the sole um the square toe i just like what he's doing with them overall and it just looks a little bit more unique than you know there was an ambush pair of puddle boots that she did that i felt like were a little bit too on the nose in terms of copying what Patek Veneta did and weren't really that innovative or creative but i feel like matthew williams when it comes to elites um especially elites i feel like maybe the givenchy stuff for me hasn't necessarily hit when it comes to footwear but i still appreciate that they don't look like anything else on the market that's something that people don't give the guy credit enough for. There's a lot of naysayers when it comes to Matthew Williams and stuff, which I don't really understand even to this day, because from my, you know, limited, over, you know, um, far, no, yeah, from my very limited looking from a far view, he seems like a pretty nice dude. And from the interviews I read about him, he seems kind of cool. He seems kind of gentle, very thoughtful type of person. But for some reason, the high fashion Twitter people or people on social media don't tend to like him. No, I think they like him, so I take that back. They like him as a person i see a lot of girls and guys um thirsting over him and thinking he's good looking and stuff and making some very weird and lewd comments about what they would do if they saw him in front of him and stuff which is probably nice for someone like himself who probably takes a lot of time to look after themselves and work out and eat well it's a nice validation but when it comes to his fashion they don't have a lot of good words to say about him at Givenchy, which might have to do with Givenchy and what it was as a brand and what that meant to people and the designer that was there prior. Um, I forgot her name. I think it was Claire something. And then before that, obviously, Ricardo Tishi and what he did. There's some legendary stuff. Um, but I think you know that that lady that was there beforehand was somebody that a lot of the fashion twitter people loved but wasn't necessarily commercially successful and then of course you get matthew williams to come in and redo the brand and become a little bit more relevant and you might lose a little bit of the panache or the kind of um you know the attention to detail or the finish that would come from somebody that is a schooled fashion student uh or a student of fashion with a capital f you lose it a little bit with someone that that would matthew but what you do get is the ability to make you know unique things cool things that kind of touch on the site guys that will become desirable and even though this is a leak shoe i feel like the same person that is able to kind of design these or have people in the team that can design things like this can also carry over to Givenchy, uh, which is obviously doing at the moment but i really like these elite shoes they kind of look a little bit um, modular in their appeal but they look like they've all been what is that because that two piece I don't know what that is. Is that two piece only? Jesus Christ. Like there's a base and then the top. Because you can see the seam there around the side. But they look incredible in my opinion. Um, I really like the big bulky look at them. They remind me a little bit of some Rick boots that I have as well in terms of the look. On the side here you've got the 1017 Elix 9SM on the side there. 97SM sorry written on the side there. Or 9SM. I got that wrong again. But I really do like the look at them. The text here says... Um, it's consistently pushing boundaries between two sort of label present a pair of mono slides which I think I mentioned previously an open toe silhouette and construction with a premium all leather back leather duh, duh. can it be open toe if it's just the back that's open that's a bit weird isn't it um, and while the spring 2023 silhouette came with a different indifferent approach to summer football 10 um the slip-on silhouette is designed with molded construction, while its blacked-out color scheme is complemented with an EVA foam outer. Additionally, the standout feature from the design comes in the form of a square toe, which is available. Okay, so they're available now at the Hypebeast store for four eighty dollars. Um, so they are out now to buy and purchase. But I do like this mono boot. I think it looks absolutely incredible in my opinion and definitely something that I'd probably wear ahead of wearing a puddle boot because puddle boots I feel like I've been overdone right fashion kids are flipping ruined that boot they've really rinsed it and kind of beaten into the ground I think a particular puddle boot is like the fashion version of a flipping com de garçon play um converses if you want to be a little bit more fashion forward, you wear the Bottega Veneta flipping puddle boots so people know what time you're on because you're wearing, you know, X 
Bottega Veneta, Daniel Lee design, Bottega Veneta Puddle Boots, whatever it may be, cool, you're better on the money. But if you're just a regular fashion head, you just have the Conver Conde Garza or play ones. But if you're someone like myself who thinks you're, of yourself to be, you know, pushing the boundaries and whatnot and really you know counterculture and underground and has their finger on the pulse and ear to the ground and all that sort of nonsense then you wear the Elix mono boots for sure and then again these in white in that jean suit color i mean in that jean suit fit from the lookbook from the show sorry in 2023 absolute money absolute money no big fan of these and love how they look so definitely check them out if you haven't already yeah check them out if you haven't already do check them out if you haven't already and that is it for the excellent zing show episode number 622 i'm thinking it was 622 thank you 622 thank you for tuning in and hanging out here with me it's been an absolute blast and i will be back in your eardrums very very soon for those of you that want to keep in touch or want to keep an eye on what i do the link to my main website is in the show note description it's called www.agassinozinga.com it's got all the links to the stuff that i do social media links everything that i do under my umbrella you can find it on there but if you listen to the audio podcast, you will hear my tune of the day. If you're watching the YouTube video, you won't see any tune. I'll just fade to black and I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Take care. Peace.